Welcome to another Jabba's Palace Roll Call. Today's character, Bib Fortuna. They want a wonder. We first meet Bib Fortuna when the droids enter Jabba's Palace, and he makes quite a first impression. His appearance is bizarre, and he speaks mostly in a language that we can't understand. If it wasn't for C-3PO immediately mentioning that they had a message for your master, Jabba the Hutt, you might be forgiven for thinking that this was Jabba himself. But of course, Bib was merely Jabba's major domo, or head of the household. And we would see him several times throughout the Jabba's palace scenes, whispering advice in his master's ear. No case, my lord. Good morning. Now, Bib may have the most screen time of any alien in Jabba's palace, except maybe for Jabba himself, and for that reason, I don't think there's any point in going through frame by frame and showing you everywhere he appears, as I do with some of the more obscure aliens in the palace. And going into his full backstory kind of is beyond the scope of this video as well, but I will put some links in the video description to videos that other people have made about uh, the background of Bib Fortuna and the Twi'lek race as well. Suffice it to say that Bib was essentially a schemer, uh, quite cunning, but also maybe not quite as intelligent or as uh, savvy as Jabba himself was. Today we're basically going to be focusing on his appearances on screen, whether it's TV shows or movies, some of the background behind his creation, and also the merchandise that's been made for the Bib Fortuna character, and there is quite a bit of it. Star Wars fans today are pretty accustomed to Bib's general design with his head tentacles and so forth, but I think it's worth pointing out that during early production of Return of the Jedi, they really had no idea what Bib Fortuna was going to look like. So they had a number of artists come up with concept sketches like these. They kind of have some shared characteristics. They were a tall, cloaked figure in most cases, but the details are very different if you compare them, and none of these actually look like Bib from the film. There were also some concept maquettes made, like this one from Dave Carson, but it was the one by Phil Tippett that actually ended up serving as the basis for the character's design. So far as I can tell, this maquette is really the first appearance of what we would later know as the Bib Fortuna character, and as sort of the blueprint for the Twi'lek species as well. If we compare the maquette to the final design from the film, you can see it is pretty similar. They've got most of the design elements already in place, such as his pale skin, misshapen head, head tentacles, and two little dangly bits there from his neck. But there are some things that are different. The maquette actually has stripes down his leku and arms, which we don't really see on the finished design. And the design from the film has sharp teeth and glowing red eyes, which are pretty distinctive for his character and were not on the maquette at all. Of course, the maquette is cut off at the arms, so we don't get to see his distinctive long-fingered hands, which they came up with later on. And also his outfit is very different. The maquette just has him in a simple red shirt, whereas in the film we see him wearing robes and armor, and it's a much more elaborate costume. You may have seen this artwork by Nilo Rodas Gemero as well. The book The Making of Star Wars Return of the Jedi actually says that the maquette was based on this artwork. I find that a little strange though because the sketch seems almost identical in every way to what we saw in the final film, whereas the maquette is clearly earlier on. The maquette also doesn't include any of the elements of the costume, such as the color or nature of his robes and so forth, and it seems really odd that if Tippett had been basing his maquette on this sketch, that he wouldn't have included anything like that. So my feeling is that probably Phil Tippett did this uh, maquette independently, first of all, and then Nilo Rodas Gemero did this sketch uh, to design Bib Fortuna's actual costume. But that's mostly conjecture on my part. It's difficult to track this kind of thing down more than 40 years later. Here you can see Nick Dudman using the maquette as a reference as he's working on the full-sized mask for Return of the Jedi. Michael Carter, an actor with quite a bit of experience on stage and screen, had been selected to play Bib Fortuna, at least partially because of his tall and thin physique. Here is Nick Dudman applying the prosthetics to Mr. Carter's face. This apparently took eight hours at the beginning, although over the course of a few weeks they got that down to under an hour which I'm sure was a relief to Mr. Carter, who had to act in that very uncomfortable makeup for many hours a day. 
One thing I found pretty cool about the way they handled Bib in the palace sequences when he has some dialogue is that he speaks basically in Huttese, but he also throws in some English or galactic basic. Master bargain it to a knight. He's no Jedi. That kind of helped the audience understand what was going on because they didn't have subtitles for what he was saying, but it also kept him feeling pretty alien. I think we can all agree that he did a great job portraying Bib Fortuna in the film, although one thing many people do not know is that Bib Fortuna's voice that we hear in the film is not the voice of Michael Carter. Instead, they brought in American Eric Bowersfeld, who also did the voice of Admiral Akbar, by the way. I haven't heard a definitive reason for why they ended up overdubbing Mr. Carter's voice. I don't think there could have been anything wrong with his performance, except perhaps that the prosthetics that he was wearing and the fake teeth made it difficult for him to enunciate. That could be part of it. The post-production work was being done in the U.S., so it might have been too expensive to get all these actors back in to redo their lines if there were problems, and Star Wars generally has a history of replacing the voices of British actors with American ones, starting with Darth Vader, so who knows if that's what they had in mind from the very beginning. Aside from his many scenes in the palace, we also see him on the sail barge, and it's not clear, just looking at Return of the Jedi in isolation, whether Bib would have survived the destruction of the sail barge. But if we look at other forms of media, we can get some idea. And this is where pre- and post-Disney Star Wars starts to diverge. The book Tales from Jabba's Palace has a short story called Of the Day's Annoyances, Bib Fortuna's Tale by M. Shane Bell, which tells how Bib Fortuna survived the explosion of the sail barge and returned to the palace in an attempt to take it over after Jabba's death. However, the Bomar monks, who were the original inhabitants of the palace, extracted his brain and put it in one of their spider-like droids. The storyline was later picked up in one of the Star Wars comics in the late 90s, where apparently uh, Bib Fortuna managed to convince the monks to return him to uh, another Twi'lek's body, and he was able to then start rebuilding his criminal empire. But I'm not really sure what happens after that. Much more recently, of course, Bib Fortuna did make an appearance in the Book of Boba Fett TV series, and in this, the idea is that he came back after Jabba died in the sail barge explosion and immediately took over his criminal empire, gradually becoming quite fat, not unlike Jabba himself, until uh, Boba Fett managed to escape the Sarlacc pit, come back and claim Jabba's throne and criminal empire for himself. This version of Bib Fortuna was played by Matthew Wood, who is an Oscar-winning sound editor at Lucasfilm, and he has a bit of a special connection to the Bib Fortuna character because he played him in 1999 in The Phantom Menace when a younger Bib Fortuna appeared next to Jabba during the Hod race scenes. We're going to come back to The Phantom Menace in just a minute, so hold that thought. Mr. Wood also played a cartoon Bib Fortuna on the Bad Batch TV series. Open our feet, I do personally prefer the Return of the Jedi voice, but I do think this worked pretty well as an ending for the Bib Fortuna character. Now let's go back to the Phantom Menace for just a second. You may have seen this photo. This is Alan Rusko dressed up as a Twi'lek who looks suspiciously like Bib Fortuna. This confused me for quite a while. The photos of Alan Rusko as Bib on the set make it clear that he was supposed to be part of the senatorial delegation of Orn Frita here, so appearing in the Senate on Coruscant. But of course, if you look at the actual film, you see Orn Frita there, but the white Twi'lek is nowhere to be found. Some people maintain that this is not Bib Fortuna, that this is actually just kind of a look-alike Twi'lek. If you search for Alan Rusko, Bib Fortuna, you'll find conflicting opinions like this article from StarWars.Fandom.com that declares that he's an unidentified pasty-skinned Twi'lek and not actually Bib Fortuna. They claim that the character was only nicknamed Bib Fortuna by the production because of his resemblance to the character. Now it is certainly true that if you go on the Wayback Machine and look at the Star Wars data bank, there is a paragraph here that essentially says that uh, the character was nicknamed Bib Fortuna, but that he wasn't actually intended to be Bib. But I don't really think this holds up. So I did some more research. I found this page from Sean Harrison Academy. Sean was 
apparently the person who created the Bib Fortuna makeup, at least one version of it, for Phantom Menace. And he's, as you can see, he says that right here. He originally sculpted and applied it when he worked for Nick Dudman as part of the crew and put it on Alan. And he was asked for this, uh, this event in 2015 to redo that and recreate Bib Fortuna as played by Alan Rusko. And he, you know, he does that. He says he, uh, it was great to see Alan walking around as Bib Fortuna again. Doesn't mention Matthew Wood at all, which seemed a little weird and added to the confusion for me. I also found this interview with Alan Rusko from Star Wars Aficionado, and they actually go into this issue quite explicitly. They talk about how he was chosen to be Bib Fortuna, and that, uh, you know, it was an honor to play someone from the original trilogy, but... And here I quote, Obviously I didn't know that George was going to change his mind about where he was going to place the character and who was going to play it, but it was his baby and he could do what he liked, and quite right too. I was a bit sad when my scene in the Senate didn't make the cut, but I can't complain, and Matt Wood did a fantastic job as Bib. That seems pretty definitive to me. And it also explains why Alan Rusko was signing official autographs as Bib Fortuna. This one was from Celebration a number of years ago. Maybe this is common knowledge. But I didn't know about it, and I've heard a lot of people uh, react <laughs> in the same way that I did, not realizing that essentially two people played Bib Fortuna in Phantom Menace, although one of them didn't actually end up appearing in the film. So I think it's fair to say that Alan Rusko is essentially an honorary Bib Fortuna, even though he didn't actually appear in any media as him. Just to be absolutely clear, the one on the left here is Alan Rusko as Bib Fortuna. The one on the right is Matthew Wood, who did end up appearing in the film as Bib Fortuna. I still see a lot of confusion online, you know, when I'm searching for Bib Fortuna in Phantom Menace and so forth, so I'm hoping this will set the record straight. So Bib Fortuna was definitely one of the most complex characters to appear in Jabba's Palace, and he's appeared, of course, in a number of different films and TV shows as well. So I guess it's only right that there has been quite a bit of merchandise made for the character. I have pretty much all of it in my collection, and I'm going to try and show it all to you right now, but I might forget one or two things, so feel free to point that out in the comments if I do. So here we have the vast majority of Bib Fortuna merchandise that has been created. Uh, I have almost everything. You may or may not know that I collect essentially all of the characters in Jabba's Palace, even though I, I consider myself a, a Jabba collector sort of first and foremost. So I do have essentially everything for Bib that has been created, and that's been uh, kind of, you know, a major undertaking, especially uh, trying to find it all <laughs> for this video. I had to search through uh, various boxes of things that, you know, I, usually what happens is I'll get something out for a video and then I'll say, I'll just put it over here in a box or something for later and I'll put it away. And then I never put it away. And then the box gets kind of shuffled under th different things. So yeah, it took a while. Uh, it was, it was kind of a big deal to <laughs> track all of these down, but I think I did find everything I was looking for. So um, yeah, we're going to look at all of these. Now I mostly am keeping this just to officially licensed merchandise uh, with a couple of exceptions that you may be able to to see if you're uh, looking carefully here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a couple of uh, sort of art pieces and customs and things that I will be introducing. But for the most part, uh, this is officially licensed merchandise, so I'm not going to include things from, like, Celebration, where people have uh, created some very high quality, like, coins and other uh, little, you know, buttons and things of that nature, patches. I'm not going to include any of that, because it would it would take a lot a lot longer to go through, and we already have enough to look at. I think this is by far the uh, most merchandise in a Jabba's Palace Roll Call video that I've made up until now. So, yeah, we're just going to go through these kind of by uh, category, I guess, look at them, compare them, and uh, see what they've made for old Bib here. So we're going to start with the action figures that have been made for Bib Fortuna over the years. Uh, the first one, of course, was the Vintage Kenner action figure. This one is quite well known by a lot of Star Wars fans. Uh, this was, of course, created in uh, or released in 1983. It came with soft goods cloak or cape and kind of a rubbery thing underneath, as well as a staff. We never saw him use the staff on screen, but I kind of like that they included it and gave him something to hold. You often see this guy without his cloak 
or staff on uh, like the secondary market. So it'll look like that if you do find one. I personally probably wouldn't be using one without his cloak or staff or, you know, all the accessories, but uh, I guess you could get away with it if that's all you've got. Now, this figure has several variants that are quite rare and expensive, so I think they're worth mentioning. One uh, is the burgundy cape version from Lily Letty in Mexico. Lily Letty had versions with this color cape and then also a burgundy variant. Those were released on actual cards, you know, in the market, and so you can find them, apparently. Um, they're quite expensive. There were also two other cape variants. One is a white cape and one is a red cape not to be confused with the burgundy, and those are both prototypes from Kenner, is my understanding, and uh, those never made it out onto the actual market, but some people have gotten them from former Kenner employees and that kind of thing. Now, without a doubt, the most unique variant is the Colgate toothpaste variant. This is from Spain in 1983 or 4, and apparently they got their hands on some overstock Star Wars figures like Bib that were not the most popular, and they decided to put them into Colgate toothpaste packages like this. Apparently, this Bib Fortuna version is the only one known to exist in a collection at this point. This one is in the collection of Steve Sansweet, the super collector. So uh, this is not exactly something that an average person could get their hands on, but it is absolutely hilarious. They did make a limited edition print of the packaging, that they distributed at Celebration Europe 2, and I do have this print. Apparently, you, if you want to, you can cut it out and make your own reproduction version of the package. I haven't actually done that, but maybe someday I will. Oh, by the way, the Bib Fortuna figure did not come with a coin like some of the later Power of the Force figures did, but they did do a mail-away version of a coin for Bib Fortuna, which is kind of cool. Funny thing is, on the back it says, Gruesome-looking low-life creature who served as Jabba the Hutt's confidant and right-hand man. Low-life creature. Uh, after this one, in 1983, there was kind of a drought of Star Wars figures in general, and especially for Bib Fortuna, we didn't have anything for quite a while. But in 93-94, Just Toys released you know, a line of Bendems that are just hunks of rubber, essentially, with some wire going through their arms so you can pose them in very limited ways. They kind of suck. I did a whole video about them, but people were desperate for Star Wars stuff at the time, so they were kind of popular. After that, we had um, the Power of the Force 2 version, which is this guy right here. I'm not going to be able to finish or fit all these guys on here, so I guess I'll mm -hmm. have to move them away, but the Power of the Force 2 line was kind of known for re-sculpting characters in a buff, muscular way. And to some extent, I think that's true with Bib here as well. Although, you know, he looks almost fat, but if you actually lift up this rubbery, weird cloak that they've given him, he's quite thin underneath. But uh, yeah, a little bit of an odd looking one. He came with a blaster. And then 2004, I think, they released this guy, which is just a repaint of the Power of the Force 2 version. He's got bluer skin and, uh, you know, more of a blue t tint to his armor there. But aside from that, it's basically the same figure. And, you know, they're not fantastic. In 2006, they released this guy uh, with the Saga collection, if I recall correctly. This is not a bad-looking figure, I guess, although his facial sculpt is a little weird, just kind of with an open mouth and so forth. And they decided to go one step further than this kind of rigid but bendy plastic or rubber, and they, they just went all in and made this essentially unmovable plastic. So he can't sit down, can't do any kind of posing or anything like that. Uh, not that the other one could really, but they really made it official. And he can't even really bend his arms. Normally he can just kind of swivel them at the elbow. So not great, but for, you know, what you want out of a Bib Fortuna figure, I guess it makes sense. And he also came with a dagger, which you can take out of here and then lose immediately. But uh, 
And it's kind of cool, something different. And it does fit in his little sash here. Now, after this guy in 2006, we had to wait quite a long time to get another Bib Fortuna figure. In fact, we had to wait all the way until 2021 when we got this guy from the Vintage Collection. This is uh, a figure with, you know, soft goods cloak, which I, I really do like and appreciate. I think it looks pretty good. And he's got nice uh, articulation, so you can bend his knees and arms and everything. You can move his head nicely. Uh, I would say this is probably, you know, the best, well, definitely the best three and three quarter inch uh, Bib Fortuna that they've made. I think some people got a little upset that he was overly blue in the paint job. Some, some of them, I think, were worse than this, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. And in the same year, 2021, they also released a uh, six inch one for the Black Series. You can see you know, you can't even fit this guy in frame. But for reasons that are kind of inexplicable to me, they went back and instead of using soft goods like they did for the smaller version, they decided to use uh, sculpted sort of rubbery plastic. And while it does look quite good, I guess, if you're just having him stand like that, I kind of think that the soft goods might have been better for this particular application. Uh, he has fairly limited articulation for that reason, but overall it looks pretty good. I did notice, by the way, that you can barely make out that he's got kind of like stripes on his Leku, which is the only example in any of the merchandise that I have here, basically, of uh, stripes on his Leku or head. And uh, I don't know if that was like a an homage to the original concept of Maquette or just kind of a mistake or what, but it's interesting. Finally, in 2023, we had this guy, lovingly dubbed Bib Fat Tuna. Of course, he came with the uh, exclusive Boba Fett's throne room set. And he was kind of intended to sit on this throne, you know. And he came with a, uh, with a staff similar to the original vintage figure, which I don't have with me right now, but... Uh, it's pretty cool. I think it's a nice figure. I do think that the soft goods are not quite as nice, though, as even this figure, which seems a little strange. But overall, it's nice to have this version of Bib in this scale. These Return of the Jedi activity books are some of my favorite things, honestly. I really enjoy just looking through these. They bring me back to my childhood somehow. And they just have a, an innocent quality that I really love. And I thought it might be fun to look through some of these and see uh, areas where Bib Fortuna appears. So we have in the uh, Return of the Jedi dot to dot fun book, he is on this page here. It says, A Handy Helper. And you're supposed to connect the dots to reveal who this mysterious figure is standing next to Jabba. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I've never actually done this puzzle but I think I might have an idea. Now, in the next one, it is the uh, Return of the Jedi word, f word puzzle book. And this one has a couple of appearances by our favorite Twi'lek Majordomo. This one is, uh, well, starts over here, Monsters, Monsters, and more Monsters, where you're supposed to go through and just find the word monster over and over again. Sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, but they do have some interesting artwork there of Bib. And on the next page as well, he is on this uh, monstrous words puzzle where you're supposed to sort of fill in all of these very descriptive terms into this crossword puzzle style puzzle. And, you know, one thing about these activity books is they have a lot of great original artwork that you don't find anywhere else. So there he is there as well. Next up, we have the monster activity book which is one of my favorites. Not just because it has Jabba on the cover, but that is a big part of it. Let's see here. Ah, yes. Now it says, find the twin Bib Fortunas. Maybe you can uh, pause it and see if you can do that yourself. You're supposed to find the two that are identical. What's worse than one Bib Fortuna? Six of them. 
However, of the six Bib Fortunas below, only two are exactly alike. Can you find them? Hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of a challenge, isn't it? Honestly, it's a little, <laughs> looking at it through the camera here, it's a little difficult for me to tell, but uh, see if you can figure that out. And over here as well, we've got a very interesting one, Bib Fortuna's Hand. And I think this is kind of a an ad adaptation of a pre-existing kind of thing that you would do uh, with a, you know, cut out paper hand, but you're supposed to watch Bib, Forta Bib Fortuna's hand open and move as if it had a life of its own. So you would cut the pa paper out and put it in some water after you've folded the fingers and uh, see it move. You know, if you're interested in maybe me having to do this, uh, leave a message in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll see about maybe doing it as a short. Next up we have the uh, Return of the Jedi Picture Puzzle Book. And in this one we have the Marching Monsters. Here are three of Jabba's favorite monsters. Which one is the tallest? Now this is an interesting one because first of all it's actually an optical illusion and all of them are the same size it says. And you're supposed to t take a ruler to make sure that that's actually true and it is, it is actually true. Although it's a little confusing because these characters should not be the same size. In fact, uh, Droopy McCool here should be much shorter than Bib Fortuna, and I think the Gamorrean would be then a bit shorter than uh, Bib Fortuna as well, but uh, definitely this is way too big for Droopy McCool. And finally we have the uh, Return of the Jedi coloring book from Kenner. Definitely a classic, and we have here a very nice little page with Bib Fortuna consulting with Jabba. As a matter of fact, I used some color pencils to color this in quite a few years ago. Well, I was an adult at the time, but I, it was still a number of years ago, and that's uh, what you see right here on the screen. Well, as far as I know, they never made an official Bib Fortuna Halloween costume, but, you know, I guess it's not that surprising since he's not a fan favorite like Klaatu, but uh, they did make this Star Wars book of masks, which includes a mask for Bib Fortuna that's not at all creepy looking. It is a little too bad that it doesn't have his Leku. I doubt if very many people would be able to place who this actually is if it was just a kid wearing this as a mask, but uh, still it's kind of cool that it exists and the artwork is nice. And by the way, if you turn the page, there's Admiral Akbar. So if you're a huge Eric Bowersfeld fan, you can go as two of the characters that he voiced. Well, there's still more figures to come, by the way. Uh, we have now one sixth scale action figure, so these are about 12 inches tall. The one on the left is from Hasbro. This is from 1996. It was part of their 12 inch uh, figure collection. This particular one was part of a two pack with Luke. And, uh, you know, it's not great. Some of Hasbro's 12-inch figures were not all that bad, but this one just doesn't really do it for me, especially, like, look at his arm here and his hand. It looks really strange. And the outfit, eh, it just looks cheap. Now, to be fair, these were cheap figures, relatively so. I This particular one, you know, because it was sold in a... Uh, kind of a, a special collector set was probably not as cheap, but eh, I'm not a big fan of this one. Um, you can even see clearly where the, the parts, uh, you know, connect here. There's little seams and there's also uh, telltale signs of where they've put a wire in for posing. It just doesn't look like a, uh, you know, a higher end figure and it's, you know, it's not, but still, I don't think anybody would use this today in place of this next figure, which is the Sideshow Collectibles figure, released in 2006, I believe, part of their sort of initial earlier wave of Star Wars figures, and, uh, you know, meant to go along with their Jabba playset, 1-6 scale Jabba throne room environment, I guess I should say. This is quite a good figure. He has a bit of a deer-in-the-headlights look to him, but otherwise, very nicely posable. Mine is a little bit loose, so he doesn't really uh, stand up that well without a, a, a stand. But 
pretty cool. Comes with this nice dagger, the exclusive version, which I do not have. Also would have come with a uh, version of the staff that we saw on the vintage figure. And speaking of the vintage figure, this is the Gentle Giant 12-inch version of the figure. Uh, you can get the original one here just to give you the size difference. I've made a whole video reviewing this, so I'm not going to go into very much detail, but, you know, it's just a jumbo, scaled-up version of the original Vintage Kenner figure. So, definitely pretty cool. Speaking of figures, we also have Lego minifigures of Bib Fortuna. There are three main styles, as you can see. The first was released in 2003 with the Jamba's Message set, and this is a little bit closer to their simpler uh, style that they were using for minifigures back then. This guy was with the 2012 Jabba's Palace set, and he's a little bit more detailed. He should have a cape like this guy too, but I'm not really sure where it's gone to. And finally we have the fat version of Bib Fortuna from the Book of Boba Fett Palace set. Uh, I guess they actually called it the, the Bib Fortuna's Throne Room did a review about that. Um, this guy also included a brick-built staff, which I thought was kind of cool. Now, in addition to this, we have um, something kind of similar, which is the Kubrick figure. This is from Japan. The Kubricks were a line of kind of Lego-like figures, but much more detailed and ex also much more expensive. Um, I do quite like Kubricks, though. I made a whole video about them as well. Disney also released the Disney Vinylmation series of figures, including this Bib Fortuna Vinylmation, where vinyl figures vaguely in the shape of Mickey Mouse, so they all have this same shape, more or less, but they're decorated in different ways. And they had a, quite an extensive line of Star Wars ones that I've talked about in the past. In addition, Disney also released a line of kind of play sets, I guess you'd call them, uh, for the different Star Wars movies, and in the Return of the Jedi one was included this guy, who is just a static figure made of kind of rubbery plastic. Uh, nice sculpt, and, and the paintwork is not terrible as well. Uh, keep this in mind, we're going to come back to this in a little bit. This is the Galactic Heroes Bib Fortuna. This came with the Jabba's Palace Cinema Scene set, which was released in 2007. I'm a huge fan of the Galactic Heroes series and did a whole video about them, so check that out if you're interested. But uh, it is kind of funny that they gave him this gigantic blaster, but uh, at least they did include his staff, and I think actually this is a pretty cool version of the character. This is the Itty Bitties Bib Fortuna, and this has the distinction of being the one and only Bib Fortuna plush that I'm aware of. This was released by Hallmark a couple years ago. In fact, it's still available, I think, in stores. It was part of a Jabba's Palace 4-pack that they released. It's actually uh, quite cute. Almost forgot the Funko Pop Bib Fortuna. Uh, not a lot to say about him. Mine has, for some reason, a bunch of, like, paint rubs on his side, and I think that was that way out of the package, if I recall. Never bothered to try and get a replacement for it or anything. He does come off of his base, which is, I guess, kind of nice because you can put him on the, uh, you know, the throne in Jabba's throne room more easily that way. These little guys aren't actually related to each other, but they do seem pretty similar in certain ways. This one is the Mighty Beans Bib Fortuna. Mighty Beans, you may recall, were released, I believe, around uh, 2010 and they had a whole line of Star Wars ones. These are just vaguely bean-shaped capsules that have a kind of metal ball bearing in them that you can use to make them flop around interestingly, and they would kind of, like, roll in strange ways. And you also had uh, little racetracks and things you could put them on. Similarly, this is a Rollins Bib Fortuna. Rollins were... Figures that were available in, I guess, European supermarkets mostly. I think this one was from Italy, if I recall. And he has a kind of ball bearing in his bottom as well that allows him to kind of wobble around in an amusing way. And finally, this one here, 
is actually part of a blind boxed set of nesting dolls. They were from uh, PPW Toy several years ago. This is sort of the top level here. We have the Rancor. Inside is Jabba. Inside him, we have Leia in her slave outfit. Inside her would have been Bib Fortuna. And then inside Bib Fortuna is a teeny tiny little salacious crumb. Isn't that adorable? This one here is part of a line of Micro Machines heads uh, that are, I don't know how to explain it, but they're just, <laughs> they're just small heads that open up and then reveal a Micro Machines scale figure inside and also a little bit of a tableau, a little bit of a scene inside. So we have Jabba in the background with Bib standing in front of him. I think these are really fun. And of course you can also display them just as heads as well. All right, here we have another group of semi-random Bib Fortunas. Uh, starting on the left, this is a Pepsi cap released by Pepsi Japan. Pepsi Japan in the 90s really went all out releasing dozens and dozens of different characters in the uh, form of these Pepsi caps, which were intended to go on top of the existing cap of a Pepsi bottle. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a nice looking little figure. Surprisingly good for what it is. Next up we have this eraser. It's a vintage eraser from 1983. Not the best sculpt in the world, if I'm honest. But it is pretty cool that they made an eraser just for Bib Fortuna. And in fact, here is the carded version. This is made by Butterfly Originals. And they had a number of them. These are plastic miniatures from the vintage Jabba the Hutt throne room action scene. And that was a model kit made by MPC and later re-released in the 90s by AMT Ertl. It had a lot of cool Jabba's Palace creatures in it. Uh, the miniatures themselves are just little shells that you would clip off of a sprue and then sandwich together. So this has two halves. And this one here on the right is one that I painted a few years ago. Honestly, this one came out pretty nice, uh, you know, taking into account the size. It's actually pretty decent. And this would have been one of the very first Bib Fortuna collectibles to appear, uh, aside from the vintage Kenner action figure. Here we have a couple of Bib Fortuna themed drinking vessels. On the left we have a figural mug by Applause. This was released in the late 90s, if I recall, and kind of is a, I guess, an homage in some way or a continuation of the vintage Sigma ceramic mugs that they released. But they never had a Bib Fortuna back in the day, so it's nice that they did add him. And then this one is, of course, the Geeky Tiki's mini muglet of Bib Fortuna. This one came with a uh, Java, large size Java mug that I've reviewed in the past on the channel. I almost forgot when I was showing you those Bib Fortuna mugs that I also have a Bib Fortuna coaster, of course. This is part of the uh, four coaster set released by Geeky Tiki's and Shag. It was a Jabba's Palace themed set. You have uh, Bib Fortuna holding a drink that seems to have a little baby Sarlacc coming up out of it. Definitely a very cool design. This is the Gentle Giant Bib Fortuna statue. This was meant as a companion piece to their Jabba on Throne statue that I've reviewed in the past. And as I recall, well, I think you could buy this separately, but you could also kind of get it as uh, an incentive for picking up the entire throne room set. It's quite a nice statue, actually. Uh, although at one point, I remember... Uh, an online store I frequented was literally giving away these statues with any, like, Gentle Giant pre-order or something like that. So I ended up getting another one. And what I did was, instead of just having two identical ones, I made this one into a burgundy caped version as kind of an homage to the Lily Letty uh, action figure that I talked about earlier in the video. 
Gentle Giant also released this Bib Fortuna mini bust. Gentle Giant, of course, has a very extensive line of Star Wars mini busts, including quite a few from Jabba's Palace, but they had never had a bib until just a couple years ago when they released this mm -hmm. guy. I really think this is well done. I love the sculpt, and the paintwork is also really nice. If we look at his face, very well done indeed. This is the Atticus statue of Bib Fortuna. Atticus is a French company, and they had quite a line of one-fifth scale statues for Star Wars that they released in the mid to late 2000s. Although I guess they're, they're still making stuff today, but generally not in this larger scale. Uh, this, you know, as I say, it's one-fifth scale, so quite a bit larger than anything else that I've shown you up until now. You saw it in, in the opening shot with all the other stuff around it, and, you know, even the one six scale figures only come up to about here. So it is very impressive on display, and especially if you have the other figures that they made for Jabba's Palace, like Jabba himself, and Gamorrean Guard, and so forth. It is just really, really impressive. I would say this is the most uh, impressive and most high-end thing that you can get as a Bib Fortuna collector, at least if you're not going for the super rare uh, action figures and so forth, stuff like that, uh, at least until fairly recently. Now, one interesting footnote about this statue is I showed you this figure earlier. You may recall this is the Disney action figure that they released in a kind of playset for Return of the Jedi a few years back. And it may look a little familiar to you because this is this exact statue just shrunk down and I'm not entirely sure what the story is here. Um, this original statue from Atticus would have been released in 2006, which I think is a little early for them to have been using digital sculpting. So it seems weird that they would have been able to, uh, you know, just have the files and, and shrink them down as they often do with this kind of thing. But maybe they did, I don't know. Uh, or possibly they did some sort of scan, but it is a pretty good miniature representation of this larger statue. And I just remember uh, really being surprised when I saw this in person. They did the same thing for several other statues uh, as well that they turned into action figures. This is a card from the collectible card game released by Decipher in the late 90s. And one reason I'm showing you this is that so much of the stuff we know about the more obscure Jabba's Palace characters actually originated in this game, just stuff that they made up for the game. So I thought I should at least uh, show this here. It says, uh, Twi'lek leader and major domo of Jabba's Palace succeeded Jabba's last major domo, Naroon Kuthus. Now, I don't have any idea who that is. I'm going to have to look him up. Plotting to kill Jabba. So, you know. Everybody and his brother was plotting to kill Jabba in the palace, it seems. So you could have him sort of on your roster, and then he also appeared in a couple of action cards, I guess. Uh, you will take me to Jabba now. And it says, if Jabba is at Jabba's palace, a, a Jabba's palace site, relocate one of your characters to that location from a related site, etc., etc. And then also, Twilight Advisor. Use three force to search your reserve deck and take one effect of any kind in, into hand. Reshuffle. No idea what that really means, never actually played the game, but uh, it is kind of interesting to look at. I do like these cards a lot, they have some interesting photos, some of which they just totally photoshopped uh, <laughs> out of whole cloth, apparently. Well, I couldn't let this video go by without at least mentioning that Bib Fortuna has a Play-Doh mold for him in the vintage uh, Jabba Play-Doh set. I made a whole video about that, one of my more successful videos, I guess I'd say. And it's just a, a press mold, so you'd put the Play-Doh in there, press it in, and then peel it off, and you'd have a one-sided Bib Fortuna figure you could play with. This is a kind of plaque, or a bust, hanging bust, of Bib Fortuna that was made by an artist uh, called Jesse Kennedy. In April 2012, I got, I think this, I got this on Etsy. He also made a Jabba for me. I don't remember if I got this first and then got the Jabba, or may, I think I may have requested the Jabba, but uh, he did a fantastic job. This is, I believe, made with polymer clay on a piece of wood with some, like, vintage wallpaper or something on it and then painted. It's very cool and uh, totally unique piece. Next up we have another unique piece, this one made by Dustin Benzing 
otherwise known as Block Watch Captain, on Instagram. And it's a piece of wood that's been carved by hand, as far as I can tell, and then painted. And I really like the design. I think it's really well done. It's just a, you know, a piece of wood on a little stand like this, but it turned out really well. He's made lots of these for vintage Star Wars characters. So check him out if you get a chance. Speaking of custom art pieces, this is a little figure made by John Sukup, who goes by the name Kettle Art. He made a whole line of figures. Uh, well, for me specifically, he made quite a number of them, but he also had just generally ones that he was making and selling back in 2014. And uh, this, of course, is Bit Fortuna, but he made a whole Jawa's Palace roster for me, and uh, when displayed together, they look really cool. I like the very simple sort of outsider art uh, style here he's used. This is a custom Mighty Mugs version of Bib Fortuna that I made all the way back in 2009. Mighty Mugs, if you're not familiar, were a line of kind of vinyl uh, toy-inspired figures, I guess you'd say, you know, urban vinyl type thing. Uh, they all had very similar bodies, but they were decorated differently, not unlike the uh, Disney Vinylmation series, although these are quite a bit bigger. And these were pretty popular for a time. I liked them because they had a lot of different characters, and you could just go to, like, the store, go to Walmart or Toys R Us at the time, and pick them up. Uh, so it was kind of fun to, you know, see what you could find. Uh, and they even sold blank ones that you could decorate yourself. For this, I did not use a blank one, though. I used a Plo Koon figure that I had, and uh, the reason for that was that I needed one that had this skirt part. Most of the Mighty Mugs have separated legs, but this is the skirt version. And yeah, I just uh, came up with this design on my own and painted it myself with a brush. Overall, honestly, it turned out pretty well. Uh, you can definitely tell that it's handmade, especially in person, but I think this uh, this overall design fits pretty well with the Mighty Mugs aesthetic, and I'm pretty happy with it. If I had a nickel for every Bib Fortuna ring that's been made, I'd have two nickels, which is not a lot, but still it's weird that it happened twice. And uh, the first one here is this from Jap Kobo, otherwise known as Jap Inc., an unfortunately named Japanese company that put out a series of sterling silver Star Wars rings in the late 90s, and one of them was this Bib Fortuna ring. I think this is just really well done. Uh, it's gotten a little bit tarnished, and I've been a little afraid to try and clean it because I wasn't entirely sure, you know, if it would ruin some of the detail. You, originally, it had kind of like shiny bits and then recessed parts that you know, kind of added to the, the detail, and I didn't want to just totally get rid of all of that, so I just haven't really tried cleaning it, but it is very well sculpted, and uh, unfortunately it's too small for me to fit on any of my fingers except for my pinky, which it's actually too big for, so I can't really wear it, but I really enjoy having it in my collection. Here's the box, as you can see. It says the Galaxy Collection, manufactured and distributed by... Jap ink. There we are. We can't quite see that. There it is. Now, I said there were two of these. The other one, I don't know for sure if it's related to this at all, but it is an unlicensed ring that I found kind of out of the blue one day on eBay, and it is pretty terrifying. It makes Bib Fortuna look like some kind of deranged monkey. I mean, even more than usual. But, you know, if you compare these, they're similar enough that they kind of make me think that uh, these people were trying to copy this, but I don't know that for sure. It does look a little bit like someone had just kind of heard Bib Fortuna described and not ever actually seen his picture. But uh, this one, ironically, is shinier than this one because this is not actual silver. It's just like a chromed metal, whereas this one is actual silver and will tarnish. Anyway, pretty cool to have in my collection. In terms of items that I don't have in my collection, there's not really all that much. Of course, I don't have the super expensive 
Kenner action figure variants and all that kind of stuff, but it's not really something that I'm looking for either. There is one thing, though, that I would like to get, and it is one of these badges. Now, this is a Starfire badge or a Star badge made by a company in the UK in 1983. So the deal with these is all of the badges have LEDs incorporated into them, and if you turn the badge around, you'll see that they have just an exposed circuit board there, and there are two places where you can insert little pill batteries, and it'll make them flash like this. Now, unfortunately, I can't seem to find where my Gamorrean Guard one is, so I'm showing you this video that I took on a potato 13 years ago, but it gives you some idea, and I just find them to be hilarious. So the only one I've been able to find is the Gamorrean, but they made a Jabba and a Bib Fortuna. So the Bib Fortuna is the one, I guess, that's most applicable to this video. I would really like to be able to track these down, both the Jabba and the Bib Fortuna. So if you have one for a semi-reasonable price, do get in contact with me. Well, I think this about does it for Bib Fortuna merchandise. They did make quite a bit of it, as you can probably tell by now. I hadn't fully appreciated just how much there was until I gathered all of it together from the various corners of my collection and put them all here in front of me. But uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of cool to see here all spread out in this way. Um, as I say, this is probably about 99% of everything that's been made for Bib Fortuna, with the exceptions of the things that I mentioned earlier in the video, of things that are either too rare or expensive or both for me to have in my collection. But uh, there is actually one more thing that I wanted to mention in this video, and that is something that's going to be released very soon. It is a concept maquette replica from a uh, real robot. They've been talking about making the Bib Fortuna version, the Bib Fortuna concept maquette, for years now, and they've actually had it semi-finished, I think, for quite a while, but for whatever reason, hasn't gotten made uh, up until now but they are going to be releasing it on the 25th of June, and so I will be releasing uh, my in-hand review at that point. So be sure to check back then if you're interested in seeing what they've come up with for uh, Bib Fortuna. But yeah, until then, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. This video was brought to you with the help of my Patreon supporters, including Palace VPs like the ones you see on your screen, and especially Angelica Brady and Jesper Murtu. Thank you all very much for your support. If you'd like to know how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month, feel free to check out the link in the video description.